Good afternoon, everyone. We are glad you're joining or rejoining us for session two of our student training today. Chuck's going to be giving an overview of student manager preferences and reporting. Lots of information in those two topics. Uh, Chuck, this group's been really fun to work with, and it looks like a lot of them have been viewing the 101 webinars and have rewatched the recording of session one. So we hope the follow-up reading and exercises have been helpful for everyone. Before Chuck talks about preferences, though, I'm going to have him respond to some of the questions you submitted. Um, there were some questions specific to reporting, and we're going to hold those until he gets to the reporting section. So, and remember, if you have questions and comments along the way today, drop those in the comments in the chat box, and I'll respond to you or get the question to Chuck. So, we're recording this, and you'll be able to return to it at will. So, Chuck, are you ready to field a few questions? Uh, fire away, yeah. All right. One of the questions was that they would like to see a demonstration on how to find and eliminate duplicate name records. Can okay. you give us a little bit of insight on that? All righty. Um, we have a tool for that. Our student manager has a tool for that. Under the tools area, you'll see data cleanup. And there is a combined name feature. And again, uh, if you have looked at this a while back and got a little spooked about it, there are a couple of great new features. One of them is the ability for you to mark names that are not duplicates so that you don't accidentally combine them in a, in a uh, future combined. And uh, I actually am going to go through this because I want to make a, I want to make a, a combination Phil Anderson and let's make this uh, Filipina Filipina Anderson and they're gonna be I got to get the address I didn't set this up right ace hardware here we're gonna change his ace hardware all right so if we were to run a report now under the duplicates Combine names, I want to do a portion of the first name, last name, and we'll skip. We'll do the preview combine. Yes, we made a backup. We're going to match three letters of the first name. Well, what will happen on that is that, and I have Philippine Anderson, I didn't get him to match up, but that if you've got, it'll show you all of the potential duplicates in the list. I'm gonna try to see if I can get the Andersons. You wanna mark these to skip next time? No, close. Let's go back to the Andersons. Why didn't the Andersons have Phil Filipina? Oh, the zip code is not right. Ace Hardware in Westmoreland. Let's make this, no, we want to do that. Uh, again, I'm sorry, Sharon, I should have had a better example set up for this. And Santa Clarita, now we're gonna go to Filipina, put in the zip code so it matches. Okay, Clarita Canyon, we still have the, the wrong one. Okay, city state zip match, city state zip match. Now we have a, finally get this going. Data cleanup, combine names, multiple matches. We'll use this portion routine, made a backup, yes. Three letters of the first name, and we still are missing a match here. Um, I'm going to get this right. Close it. And just P H I L Philip Phil Anderson. Oh, Andreessen. A N D E R S O N. All right. Now let's see. Tools. Data cleanup. Combine names. Preview combined. Yes, we've made a backup. Three letters of the first name. 
and we still aren't. I'm obviously I'm trying to create a duplicate, and of course your students manage to create duplicates all the time. But the point is, is that it'll show you the list of all the duplicates. If there are any that are not duplicates, you can uncheck one of these, and the next time you go to record, it will combine those duplicates and it'll skip the ones that you had marked for do not uh, include. And again, if you're nervous about doing this, again, the, the way to do that would be to run it in the view mode. There is an option under combined names that you say just run a report and take a look at your dupes. But this is a great way to do that. It will clean those up and get rid of a lot of your dupes. Uh, the other way of doing it and where we've, oh, we still have, I'm still getting differences in the, in the name of the city. That's why it wasn't showing up for the Andersons. If you say these are, if you've got two names that are bona fide duplicates, what you do is take the ID number of the good twin, copy it, go to the duplicate twin, paste in the ID number. We're doing Bobby and Carol. They're not a good example. It's all right to change. And it'll then tell you you've got, uh, you're going to be putting that to a new record. And if you want to combine names, you just number and it will bring them in. So, uh, and of course, there are some fail safes that if they are both registered, both, you know, doppelgangers are registered for the same course, it won't let you do that. And um, again, I, I didn't set up a good example here. Sharon, next question. I, I whiffed up the setup on that. <laughs> okay, looks like we had some folks um, practicing adding some names to a course, but the question came up is, what about a group of names? Is there a way to import a group of names into the course? And if so, can that be demonstrated, please? They don't want to enter them uh, one at a time, I guess. Yes, and of course, I don't have I don't have an example of an import here. Um, 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 uh, hang oh, for crying out loud. Um, under the quick what? report area, and I'm going to have to show you. Um, under registration, speed registration entry, what you would do is that you would pick your course that you want to import names into, and then you would use the import, well, you'd set up the fees. You know, what is the fee you want to use for this course? Uh, if you have a group V member fee, whatever the special fee is that all of the students that you're going to be importing, and then using the import wizard, you can point to an Excel file. And that Excel file would have the names of your students in or the students from the company. Um, and I probably don't have one in my file. So I don't have a set of examples to import. Well, here's a test import file right here. Um, we're importing, see if we do an import column heading. We're going to skip that name. Um, and we're going to say this is going to be the name of the student. You basically match up this file to the column in student manager where that will go. First name, uh, there is first name, last name, uh, the firm name, go do the firm, first name, firm name, okay, skip the password, we'll okay on the ID, skip, we'll, we'll go ahead and do the add date, Don't know that date added is on here. We're not going to worry about that. We'll skip that. Address, city, state, zip, phone number, OK, cell phone, email. I'm going to skip the rest of these. Yes, there's a header. 
and it will then show you here are the names that we're going to be importing. <laughs> and again, if the ID matches or the email matches, it will not duplicate those names in the database. It will just add those into the system. And uh, that should have created them. And I hit cancel out of that list rather than accept it. But that will add. Let's see if we can get this now that I know what I'm doing. Test import. OK. We can skip that, skip that. We're going to say OK, OK, skip, skip that. We're going to add that, skip, skip, add. OK, 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 phone number, cell phone, email. OK, skip that. Is there a header? Yes. OK, this is where I hit the wrong button, escape. Control Q to continue. Would you like to assign these names a source code? Yes, I will. No, I don't want an interest code. And basically what that did then was import all of these people from that Excel file into the database. So that is how you do that. I will give you a tip. And then once you're done with the import, you would exit this, it takes you back to the spot where you could pick a new course to add uh, to your to your list. So if you wanted to import into a different course. Um, I'm going to segue over to the uh, website. We actually have, and we'll cover this again, under student manager resources, under your, uh, uh, this would be tools. We have a sample Excel file sample name export file so you can download that file and give that to your client or give it to a staff member if you're having staff type in names in excel and then that will be basically automatically formatted to be able to be imported into the database so all right sharon let's try another perfect. one perfect well we have a lot here more in the report area so why don't you go ahead and get started with preferences and I'll hold some of these until you talk about reporting. Sounds good. All right. Now All let's right. back to the slideshow. Well, on the user training, uh, we're glad you're here. Now, again, we can't promise that after your training here, you're going to end up with a beach bod like that. And, and trust me, I have not been working out. That That is a paste over. But I just thought, you know, hey, it's spring and there is possibilities for us all. So now that we're setting it home in place. So anyway, all right, on to the questions. We've covered a couple of these. We're gonna cover preferences real quickly, get into a reporting overview, and then kind of at the end of the reporting overview, we've got some specific report questions that we'll go through that I think will be good examples <clears throat> of how we might um, uh, go about looking in over the reporting system. And then I'm going to give you my favorite reporting areas. Kind of, again, we'll, we'll be looking at more of a, um, how do you say, forest level view. We're going to be looking at a 10,000 foot view of reporting. Won't be getting into a lot of nitty gritty other than going through the case study. Again, you've got resources in the webinar um, archives. There are a lot of, of webinars on report writing, and uh, we'll reference those to you on your way out the door. So, all right, let's rock and roll talk about preferences. We covered this a little bit, I think, uh, overview last week, but preferences are so critical in how the system behaves. It really allows you to customize that system to match up with your needs. Couple of ways to do it from the edit preferences, or if you're using quick launch, you can hit that button down there. One note, again, depending on your level there at your institution, um, again, you may not be the one who's responsible with, for this. Usually it is a system administrator, kind of your aceware keeper of the flame, who should be doing editing, 
However, I think it's important that every user know that there are options available kind of under the scene. So if you want to do something, you say, you know, I remember Chuck saying that there's a preference for that. You could at least talk to your administrator about saying, hey, can we turn this on or can we deal with this preference that might help me do my job? So again, um, if you are able to view the preferences, you'll see the colors. Uh, they're coded uh, to indicate the level of access that that provides. Um, what are the types of functions in preferences? One of the main ones is turning fields on and off. And then the other one is labeling the field. Some of the fields are ones that we can repurpose, uh, kind of the old MASH cross out incu or cross out machine gun right in incubator. You know, if you're not using badge name for the alternate badge name, like it for conference uh, sign-ins, and you want to use it for something different, you could put in um, the um, uh, maiden name. You could put in alumni uh, year. Uh, you can put in any data element you want. You basically reuse it. Uh, controlling field behavior, and then system behavior. There are certain things that you can set up at the system level. Each one of the main screens has its own tab uh, for all of the settings within that. Um, so for system preferences, some of the main ones are macro keys that you can put in key elements. Uh, do want to note that the Shift F2 key is the key that stores the current system date. So if you need to type in today's date, uh, in a um, data entry form or in running a query, doing shift F2 will type in today's date. Now that was, Sharon did this a couple days ago, so that was the date Sharon did the screenshot. Uh, disable first word search, that again is the ability, if you've got slow search modes, you can try that. Um, name preferences. Um, again, um, the top part is typically turning fields on and off with the ability to relabel those fields. And then down at the bottom are more of the system preferences, the behavior kind of elements. Um, and again, there is a pretty detailed review of these in your student manager help online help guide. Course level. Uh, there is a membership area if you're doing memberships. There is quite a bit of detail on how you might want to do your cloning. And then some notes on reminders and follow-ups. And again, if you're not using course reminders, that is if you're not having the system automatically send your students a reminder, the course start date is on a certain time. Again, with moving to online classes, that may not be as critical. Uh, but that is something that when we do get back to normal uh, and you want to do that, this is how you can enable that at your system. Um, display due and paid totals. One of the things I'll note again is that if you are having a slow network and you want to speed up viewing the course screen, uncheck the display due and paid totals on your course setup and that'll bring your screen uh, of, the of the course view up a lot quicker. Um, the registration screen, again, um, turning fields on and off, quite a few system behavior preferences in here, including info on package rates if you have bundling uh, option on your, on your system. And again, uh, in the online help guide, you've got quite a bit of detail. This is a screenshot from the online help guide that talks about all of the different elements that you can edit. And then organizational defaults, where again, you can put in uh, your title. And again, if you have a multi-department unit and certain staff are logging in that only work with a particular subgroup of classes, they can actually have a different variation of the title of the, this is your institutional title, your, your college name and whatever department that might be, OSHA Lifelong Learning, it might be professional development, 
you're able to edit that and basically tie that to the user's login. Enabling and disabling fields, of course, is one of the primary functions of the preferences. And also, again, as we mentioned, the redefinition of some different options. Um, on the faculty setup, again, uh, enabling disabling fields, and then some instructor assignment uh, customizing. How do you want to set up uh, how the instructor is paid? Uh, you know, do you want to check instructor conflicts? Do you want to clone instructors when you are cloning a class? Um, and again, these are options that you have as you're working with the system. Pay information. Again, uh, there are, are some elements here. Uh, firm escrow. I, I'm not sure how many people realize this. If you're familiar with escrow in general, one of the options is to actually have firm level escrow. Now, what that means is if you've got Chuck from Aceware and he's saying, I can't gum, um, but rather than a refund, hold my the money for this into the firm escrow, then anybody else from Aceware, uh, from the company Aceware, could use that escrow uh, for their registration. It doesn't have to be the same exact staff member as long as they're on the same firm. So again, that is something that if you have a lot of firm registrations is a great tool to use. Coupons for one-time coupons is set up in the pay area. And then the other thing I wanna make sure is that you can define payment types. I know a lot of you are using grant, you know, maybe you've got a scholarship fund, maybe you've got a workforce grant that is paying for the fees. And again, you can define up to nine different alternate payment types um, for your methods of payment. The other big thing, and this is relatively new, is that you can turn on and off the, the payment type that will appear when you go to make a payment and you, go, you click the drop down for cash, check, Visa, MasterCard, if you're only using Visa and or you're not using Discover or you're only using one of the alternate pay types, then uncheck. You would uncheck those ones that this your system admin would uncheck those that they don't use, and that way they don't show up on the screen uh, when you're making your selection. All right. Sharon, we're going to roll into reporting, and what I was going to do is um, go through the reporting, and then we get to the questions. Does that make sense? Will do. Sounds good. And no other, any other questions that kind of percolated up during the first part and my stumbling and rumbling uh, yeah. combining related to, reporting? Uh, preferences. So carry on. Okay. Um, all right. Defining reports, we kind of did this again, I think, uh, last session, but the idea that any output from student manager is really in a, a report. So again, function keys, quick reports, all of these others are a report. Quick reports, again, if you haven't discovered them from the course screen, the quick reports give you the ability to run a battery of reports on a course at one time in kind of a batch mode. There are also quick reports on the name screen, the registration screen, and of course from the registration, that would be called the receipt printing option. Faculty and budget also have a quick reports area. Function keys, and again, these are Chuck's favorites here among others. Uh, so again, the um, F2 key for course level reporting, um, the F5 key for name reporting, and the F7 key for payment level reporting. Again, great tools for doing quick lookups of data on, on your name records or on name, course, and registration. <clears throat> um, updated reports. One of the dilemmas is that um, your system may have reports that are kind of old and we've done updates to them um, there are some that need to be updated year by year because they have dates, they have date ranges built into the report 
Uh, one of those examples are the quarterly growth reports. Uh, so again, they have to be tied to a given date range for a quarter. Um, you can go into student manager resources uh, report templates right there and download these reports and import them into your system. And again, if you're not sure how old your reports are, certainly just check with your tech and they can certainly help you out with that. The other thing that is useful, if you haven't discovered, is your top reports area. Um, under the uh, resources, guides, manuals, and white papers, there are a number of different documents that are uh, available for you. Again, some are locked, uh, but the top reports area is one that is not, and I'm going to actually open that here. So we're going to go to um, guides, manuals, and white papers, click on top reports, and it'll give you a um, give you a preview of some of the top reports that users have said were useful in Aceware. So again, it's downloadable. You can open it up, take a look at it again. And if you see a report in there that you think is useful and uh, maybe you need a little help with, that's again where your tech can give you a hand but most of these are identified in your system and again, available for you to use. So, all right, finding reports. Um, one of the dilemmas, it's kind of a uh, problem of plenty, is that there are so many report areas at Aceware, it sometimes you wonder, well, where's the best way to get your report? Well, I believe Sharon has in the handouts a map of reporting areas that basically takes the report main menu and explodes it. Um, that's right, Sharon, we good on that? That's correct, that's correct. And so again, in the accounting area, uh, there are reports related to daily income, which would be at the pay level, there is report there are reports at the course level i think there are reports at the registration level and of course my favorite deadbeat report is in there and ditto you know they are generally organized by functional area and we'll we'll circle back to that in a bit so what are the elements of a report again for you experienced people it's like okay yeah big deal but for newbies it's there are really multiple elements that all come together to make a report work. Number one is the format. There is how that report will look when it comes on the screen or is printed on the paper. And that is actually what is the report itself. And again, we talked about the 300 reports. And again, you can make more, you can edit, add as you want, uh, that you're able to. Um, that you're able to do that. So um, the second thing is the setup on the report setup screen. There are a lot of times questions about, do you wanna include canceled registrations? Do you wanna include canceled courses? Do you wanna include waitlisted? Do you wanna include billing only registrations? Obviously that will impact what is going to be displayed on your report. Uh, so again, that's part of it, the setup um, questions you would answer. And then finally, the query where it's where you get to decide which elephants in the savanna do you want to take a look at? Ones with left tusks or right tusks, without tusks, baby ones, big ones, mama elephants, daddy elephants. Again, that's all in the query where you're going to specify the data that you run. I'm going to go into the demo and let's just go through an example. So if we were to go to a course listing and I'm going to do CEU reporting, uh, there is the default report, which would be one of the formats. And then there are alternate reports, additional reports. And these reports might have a different layout. They might be landscape. They might be portrait. They might have different data elements on. 
They might have uh, be laid out differently. Here's an example of a file folder layout. Uh, they might be organized in a different fashion by the use of a Just Do It, which allows you to sort courses in different ways or sort the data in different ways. So again, that's part of the decision. What template, what format do I want to use? And then, as we said earlier, do I want to include canceled records? Do I want to show this to the screen or send it to the printer? So we're going to say, I want to include canceled records. I'm going to use the default report, which should be like a course listing. So now I've done the format of the report, how it's going to look. I want to include canceled records, which is on my course setup. Now I'm going to go to the query or the filter where I say, which courses do I want to look at? Well, if I was wanting to look at a given year, I might say, well, I'll use course number begins with the year that I'm using for the report. Or I could say, I want a course that begins between two dates. Uh, or here's one, I want to run just courses where they have a wait list. Uh, so let's just go ahead and run this courses between two dates. And we're going to say 0101, and I'm going to tab out because it'll automatically assume the current year if I don't put in a year, 0301. So we're going to do the first two months of the year. And here are the courses in the default format. This is the format of the report. And here are the courses in the date range that I, I ask for. So that's a quick thumbnail of the, the layout or the process of generating reports. So we're back to that question of how do we decide what report area I want to go to to get a report? And again, so many choices. Courses between two dates, well, where could I go? Registrations entered by a staff member, where do I go? Payments made by Visa, where do I go? Names with an interest code, where do I go? Well, if you take a look at this, I just came back from spending time with my grandson, who is a little fella, and one of the favorite games is matching. Where does the item go? And in student manager reporting, you're really doing the same thing. You're saying, well, if I was looking for a pot, where would I go? Would I go to a bedroom? Would I go to the shop or garage? Or would I go to a kitchen? Well, okay, you drop that in the kitchen. How about a saw? Well, probably most bedrooms don't have saws. Kitchens might if you're using it to saw up, um, I don't know, a hunk of frozen meat or something, but probably it'd be in the garage. And again, so that is the point about looking up reports in manager is that you'd want to find the area of reporting that's going to have the data that you really want to display on a report. Okay, well, Chuck, you know of the history, but what about me? Well, we have help. On the online help guide, if you go to the how do I under reports, there is a great little tool called report area guide. So again, if we go there to the website, I'm going to get back to this. Um, we're going to go to the help guide and, oh, that's not the help guide. Let's open the help guide. That's on help. So here we go. How do I, we go to reports, report area guide. So again, and what this will show you is for every reporting area, accounting, demographics, courses, if you click on the area, it'll show you the reporting specific subgroup of reports. And here is the real money in this. Here's where the gold lies. This will tell you what databases the report includes. Now, what that tells you is a couple of things. Number one, what are the data elements I can expect to find? So like this is the garage, and it has in it tools that include name stuff, course stuff, course UDF stuff, and pay stuff. So if I'm looking for anything out of these four tables, 
I could get it out of cash box. I could also get pretty much some of the same stuff out of daily income by source, but that I can also query on or get data about the registrations from this. And again, there's income and enrollment summary. I get course information, I get grouping data, but it'll also give me the summary data on the income and enrollment counts. So even though registration records are not included in this particular report area, it will give me a subtotal. Um, the report kind of gives you that as an add-on benefit. So again, that's the way you use this. So I say name data. Well, I want names and firms. Well, so what areas can I get names and firms? Well, names with codes. Okay, CRM info. Mailing labels has it. Firms with names obviously has it. And credentials has it. So again, yeah, several reports in here would give me data for names and firms. But anyway, I'm going to leave you uh, this area because again, it's a great way to, as you're, as you're kind of planning where it is you want your report to come from, uh, this is a, a great spot for you to get there. Sharon, how are we doing? Any popping questions you want to deal with right now? We're just about to the general Q&A area. Um, we, nope, nope, I'd carry on for right now. Hold up, all right. So we're back to the reporting. So again, as we're as we're wrapping up the PowerPoint part, we did this last week, but I want to do it again. If you want to do something in Manager and you're not sure how to do it or where to go, call, email your tech. And again, um, we are pretty confident that 90% of the time, Manager can do it out of the box without a whole lot of special handling. But again, if you don't know how to do it, um, you need to let us know. And maybe it's something that manager cannot do right now. But if you, if we understand what it is you want to do, uh, we can talk to the programmers and add that as a new feature. And you'll get your name and press as um, the person who gave that hot tip that made life better for everybody who uses student manager. All right, Sharon, we are ready for some case studies, questions, so fire away. Okay, first question I have here is gonna be in your favorite area. Can you explain the deadbeat area, what that means, and go from there, and then I'll see if you answer the question while you're discussing it. Deadbeat right. area, and some of the reports Deadbeat show areas. paid up people. My so. favorite area. I'm uh -huh. going to actually, now that, now that we've done that, you've kind of given away. I'm going to skip. We're going to hold that question and let me jump to okay. my favorite report areas. So, again, here are a series of general questions and kind of tied into the main areas of reporting. Just, whoa, just about anything to do with registrations, there it is. Accounting, one line, one reg, deadbeat. Um, so again, um, I'll, we'll talk more about that when we answer this, explain what the deadbeat area is, because it's really not only for deadbeats or balanced dues. It is a good general purpose registration reporting area. All right. Course level, course reports, lists, counts. One of my favorites is courses CEU reporting. And um, the other one would be under course, under accounting income and enrollment is a decent one. Uh, but for list and reporting, um, though that's my favorite. I'll tell you another reason why in a bit. Names, email blasts, marketing, mailing labels, name counts. Best way to go, I think, is demographics, names, mailing labels. And you'll note some of these report areas are ones that they actually have a shortcut key. Alt-D will jump you to the deadbeat reporting area. Control-M will take you to the mailing label area. Okay, payment details. Well, basically for payment details where you're wanting to do 
querying on like only payments done by credit card in the last month, uh, only payments done by credit card for courses with account number ABC. Uh, the daily income by source, and there are two, depending on how you want them displayed by date order or by course order. Uh, but again, they allow you to build a query of just about any shape, kind, or form. And then finally, course income would be accounting income enrollment summary uh, is probably my favorite when you're talking about course income. Now, the other reasons why deadbeat CEUs and names are my top reports is that if you are doing exporting, if you are exporting registration level data, the deadbeat area is the one area doing registrations where you will only have one row in your spreadsheet per registration, per person, per course, per, uh, per, per location. So that you know that if you said, show me all the registrations between two dates and there are 140 rows, there were 140 registrations during those two dates. You don't see the same registration displayed twice in the, in the spreadsheet view. Ditto with courses. If you want a list of courses exported, then certainly this is the area. CE reporting will only have one row per course. Um, now, again, having said that, the F2 key, which I think we have a question coming up, uh, will also do that. And then finally, names. If you just want one name per selection of whatever you're trying to do, mailing labels, no matter no matter how many mailing, how many uh, different alternate query elements you might use, interest code is within A, B, C, or D, names added between X, Y date, registrations from courses X, Y, and Z, then mailing label report will combine duplicate names so that you just have one name output for whatever your quilt, your query element might be. All right. So Sharon, back to the question. Explain okay. Deadbeat. What is special yep. about Deadbeat? All right, number one, uh, the Deadbeat area is actually listed under accounting, but it could have also been listed under registrations because it really is, again, a general purpose registration report. And so, uh, the standard report, and I'm going to recycle this report area, the standard report would give you all registrations, no matter whether they're paid or not. So we're going to look at 20 fall registrations, and there are, we're going to go to the last page, 30 names, 55 registrations that are registered already for fall 20 of, of 20. And it shows you the name, it shows you the registrations tied to that name. Now, the deadbeat part comes is that under the additional report area, we have a couple of alternate reports that are called just do deadbeats. Now, what they do is that they have a special feature in them called a just do it. And when you pick a report that has this just do it, Feature in it, just do deadbeats. It basically adds a subfilter. We can basically add another criteria inside the report to only give us selected records. That is where the deadbeat nickname comes from. But again, don't be uh, constrained to think that the only thing you can use that report area for is if you're looking for people who owe you money. That's what this formula does. It says select from this database. Cursor 5 is the report we're on where the due less the paid is greater than zero, which means they owe more than they paid and they are deadbeats. So now let's look at what this looks like. And now instead of 30 people who were in this course, 
Let's zoom back out. There are 20, we have a lot of deadbeats in there. Uh, 20 people that have balances and 27 registrations have balances. So, boy, I have a lot of deadbeats here and I need to clean those up. But that is where the deadbeat report gets its name in that it really is, um, the you, you can run deadbeats from within that, but it really has many, many other additional uh, characteristics. And if you kind of look at this, this is kind of a, general um oh if we're not sure where else to put a report it'll go into the deadbeat area uh, there are some reports in here that i've told in past uh, areas all reports with memo which is a review which is really an inventory of your reports uh, prior year growth there are some statistical reports life history reports um reports of um unduplicated nose counts. Although again, I do want to note, if you're really looking for, you say, I want to know how many bodies registered for classes between two dates, the deadbeat report will give you that as basically part of your base report, 0101 through 0301 again. Run that report, and we go to the back, the bottom of the page, that number down on the lower left, the total number of names is the nose count. So while there were 16 registrations in those two months, they represented seven people made up those uh, 16 registrations. So that is your nose count report right there. All right, Sharon, let's go, what's next? Okay. Now, you know about this question, it's a multi-tiered question and it's related to the F2. So can you get in there? Yeah, let me get to that. And I think we're talking about the Brenda question, right? Yes, yes, there so you go. Brenda's let's got a question about, the, go ahead. Uh, a question about courses run in the past two years and if she generates it, can she put it in Excel? And can she add columns to it? If she wants to add more elements than what is already showing. And can one of the columns be the course code? Well, let's go ahead and jump in there and I can get you part of the way there. So we're gonna go to F2. Uh, first of all, the question about Excel, we're gonna answer and, if, and the answer is absolutely. If you go to the very top, click Excel, you'll have the ability to output this report in Excel. Now, in the green area is what determines part of your setup for what data is reported. Now, she was talking date range. So, whoop, date range. So, it said, we want to look at, again, just courses from the first of the year to the, and we'll make this 0229 since we have a leap year. And so that will give us courses within a date range. Now let's take a look at that. I'm gonna show it to the screen for now. So here's a list, we have 33 courses and here's the data that we're getting. Well, the alternate course number is not included. So let's try that again. So here's the element. We want to export this to Excel and adding extra columns. Well, that is what this view extra fields is for. So the column that um, Brenda is asking for is the course alias. You said, well, what is the course alias? And um, I know what it looks like because it's on the course screen under additional information, and it's called the alternate course code. But I need to know the actual name of that field because I have to type it in. There isn't a drop down, a cheat sheet for me. So if we go to the screen layout on the help guide, open up the course screen, go to additional info, hover over the field that we want, voila, there it is, co-alias. All right, so now we can jump back to manager and we're gonna type in co-alias. All right, now Brenda also wants to know 
the sponsor for this course? Well, that question there is, where is the sponsor information located? Um, now, right now, the sponsor information would be typically put in the sponsoring firm. Right now, Brenda, we're not able to get to that. Actually, Matthew says he will be able to add that in the next bill. So we'll have to go to a long form report, which we will in a second. So this will give you everything but the sponsor. So we click on that. There is that alternate course code plus the rest of that data. And when we get done viewing this, it'll ask, do we want to export that to Excel? And we could, but I'll skip it for now. Now, the field that uh, Brenda was looking at, which we would say is sponsoring firm, the dilemma is that we don't store the firm name here. What we store is the reference ID to that firm uh, in the firms table. We can get to that from a long form report, but we can't get to it from F2. So we're going to put in Acme Cleaners on this course 20S. It's a 20S course. And let's go to a long form report. Chuck says he likes the CE report. Courses, CE reporting, we're going to modify. So hang on, kids. We're going to actually get into doing some modifying. We're going to do the default report. And the Karen wants, or Brenda wants, the courses between two dates. And we're going to do 01, 01, 20, 03, 01, 20, 20. And we have our report. Now let's take a look to see if we've got and I don't remember what that report was. We're going to bring that up. It was, well, I'm not sure which one it was. Let's see if we can put in a sponsor for application development. We're going to put in Kansas State University. Okay. All right, that's the application development seminar. Okay, so what we want to do is add the alias and we want to add the firm name to that, the firm sponsor. All right, this is the basic uh, template that we're dealing with. What we want to do is in the detail area, and again, the detail on report modifying is available to you from the help guide. There is a series of information under reports on modifying reports that you can get into. Or I think probably if you're maybe like me and you kind of want to see how it works in the first place, if you go to the webinar archive under the reporting tools, you're going to see um basically if we scroll down to guide to the galaxy magical reporting and here we go report modification basics so you got basics aesthetics intermediate and extreme and they'd be pretty much kind of i guess basics intermediate aesthetics and then extreme would be the sequence that i would use if you're doing your homework on that so what I'm doing is I'm adding some space underneath the row that we've got to put more data in. And to preview the report is a file preview. So I've got some space made in the report. So again, if you're in modifying a report and you want to know what, it, what, what you have done will look like, you can just go to file print preview and get a preview of that. So now what we want to do is add the course alias called co-alias and we can either see if it's in the data environment and you basically click a couple times until we get to the list and we're looking for co-alias in here to see if we can see it. 
And by golly, it's not in there. So we're going to use a function. So one of the other tools that's part of the report writing setup is the ability to do gopher functions where we want to say, I want to add data that is not on the report and we'll use a function to find that. And this is the help guide and we're going to use add course function. And so you look up the function or you go to the function area in the reporting area look up one that sounds right the add functions are the gopher functions i say and you can see examples so what do we do we put in the course code and then we put in quotation marks the data that we want displayed so i'm going to actually copy that function go back to the report i'm going to paste it in only I'm going to change co-beg date because I don't want the begin date, which is what that is, and put in the course alias. And now we have the course alias displayed on this report. Okay, so that's part of Brenda's need. The other thing she wanted was the firm name. Well, what do we do? What do we have in the goodie bag for firm? Let's see if there's an add firm function. There is one. Well, we look at this add firm and it says, well, what I need to pass is the name ID, but that's not what I want. I need the firm ID because that's what is stored on the course record. So we're going to go to related topics, look at the other one of the other related functions. And there it is, add firm two will give me what I want. And so I pass it the firm ID, which in this case is this CoFM ID, because that's the firm ID on the course. We're going to grab this example, copy it, go back to our report, paste it in. I'm making an expression box. That's what these tools over here do is allow me to add elements to the form, paste it in, and we just want the firm name, which is FM firm. If I could, and when you're putting things inside quotation marks, in this case, uh, case doesn't matter for the reporting. Let's see what that looks like now. We've added this function. We're going to preview. Oh, we didn't, it's telling us we can't spell or that we have to update. So we need to do, I used the wrong reference for the firm. And there it is down here. Mastering Student Manager, Acme Cleaners is the sponsor. Application Development Seminar, are there more Application Development Seminars? Maybe I had a different one. Apparently I picked the wrong, or I picked the wrong course. But there is one with Student Manager where Acme Cleaners was the sponsor. So again, that is kind of a quick review, well, a, a, a detailed review. Now, once we've modified this report, we're going to go ahead and save that. Did I cancel that, Sherman? I can't believe I did that. I canceled that report. <laughs> OK, uh, I, we're just about out of time. I ended up taking quite a bit on that. What have we got? Any questions, new questions coming in that we want to cover? or? We'll let people... um, the only other question I think might be good to cover is on the F2 as well. Uh, someone wanted to know a little bit more about the filter there. They had seen that announced oh, in our new filter. release. filter, okay. And so you uh, might be good to demonstrate me... that quickly. Right, let me, let me close this because I need to start it over again. Oh, close. I'm gonna start. I'm going to start a new session here. Close up. 
where is my Dapple demo? Mm -hmm. Oh, hang on, got to log in. All right, so the uh, the F key. One of the new features in 86 is something called set filter. And again, the idea here is that uh, with the F key, the idea here is that if you have a department where you have multiple programs going on, you have OLLI programs, you have professional development programs, you might have kids programs. If you have staff that work with particular program, so here we have a category of OLLI. And I say, I'm an OLLI person. All I want to do is see my OLLI classes. So what you would do is you'd set up your green screen, view all. In the category, I'd say, I just want to show OLLI programs and set the filter. Now, what that does is anytime I look up an active course, or I'm on a name and want to register somebody into a class, the only courses that I'm going to see are OLLI, are OLLI program courses. So again, and the beauty of this is, and again, it'll tell you at the top here, non-canceled and the category is OLLI. So you know there is a filter that is going on on this record. And again, that filter stays on. If I were to close and open it up again, log on, and we'll see whether it remembers my log in with the alternate ID. Cancel now. And it did. So again, the category, it will remember that until you get rid of the filter. And how do you do that? If you go back to F2, there is a option that says clear filter. So again, even if you're doing it temporarily, if you're working with a subgroup of classes and you're a jack of all trades, you register this, that, and the other, you could use the set filter to kind of give you a mini view a subset view of your courses, uh, skip through them, and when you're done, hit the clear. And now the next time, the next time you go into Student Manager, you're going to see all of the classes that you've got showing. So again, and the other thing I would say is that again, um, I think we sent out in, uh, didn't we send that filter uh, tip? in last month's yeah. handout we did yes yeah. but again, even if you do have a filter set it will not affect any reports that you run so that's all independent of reports sharon i'm going to let you wrap us up uh, with questions or Very good. Very good. um i just want to follow up and let everybody know we appreciate their patience went over a little long today and i'll follow up with everyone with some additional resources and, and readings and some exercises for you to do, and I hope you find those helpful. Um, in the newsletter today, we mentioned our June week of learning, and you will all have an opportunity to choose some topics you'd like to see at our week of learning the first week of June instead of conference this year. So be sure to, to uh, participate in that too so we can get you some more learning activities. But boy, today they got some basics, some intermediate and advanced uh, exercises involved. that they saw you do. So that's all I have for everybody, and we appreciate you joining us. We hope you have found this useful. Be safe, and uh, we will see you next time. Have a good afternoon. Bye bye. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.